So what does a standard day look like in your in your job? Oof. So as an assistant producer at Sky, we have three different shifts that we can do. Um, the early shift and the late shift are fairly similar in that you're doing similar things. It's just you start at a different time of the day. Um, let's say I'm on the early shift. Um, we'll have a handover email from the day before. If there's nothing left over, then it's just waiting for, for stuff to come in. But there are things that we do every day that kind of don't change. So we've got um, like these things called inserts, which are race replays. Um, when the presenters are talking about a particular horse um, on the channel, we show like a, a replay of their most recent run at one of our courses. Um, and it's, you know, you put the name and an arrow pointing to which horse you're focusing on, like a, um, a five second freeze train, then it runs out the rest of the race. You put some nice fantasy shots on the end of those. So we usually do like 10 to 15 of those a day, and we always work a day in advance, so we get stuff ready for the next day. Um, so it's not as much of a, of a rush when it comes to actually going live on air. Um, yeah, we usually go on air about varies from like half nine to 11 o'clock in the morning, depending on kind of how much racing we've got. Um, um, so it's race day live, and then that usually runs through till about six or seven o'clock. And then we have stateside, which is obviously the American racing. Um, sometimes stateside filters into race day live if there's not um, if there's not as much UK racing to cover. Um, but on, on top of the inserts that we make, we you know we, we clip up interviews from all of the races that come in. Um, we put together little promo features or um, we've got these things called in and out breaks which are like 30 seconds of a like a race from a few years before when it's coming up to that race happening again so we'll pick like three or four previous winners for this big race um, only like 30 seconds with a bit of music over the top um, and they play out kind of off the back of a an ad break or going into an ad break so they're the sort of things that we do most days as well um what else we do oh yeah so the other shift which i haven't actually done yet because i'm still quite a new starter i guess in terms of um you know there's a, so there's a gallery shift where you kind of work with the producer in the gallery and that's more about making sure that everything runs smoothly on air, keeping an eye on all the cameras and seeing like, who's in the parade ring, um, potential interviews that we could get before or after races, organising all of that. And then the gallery AP speaks to us through a, a kind of a, a, a machine that you buzz through and you can speak to them from the gallery. Um, so if they need us in the office to make something up for them, like last minute, and say if there's like breaking news, mm -hmm. they buzz us through, they let us know. I'm also in that. So, I guess breaking news wise, it, it, it can get quite stressful sometimes if there's quite a lot of breaking news and mm -hmm. you have to um, kind of do things as quickly as possible. But day to day, as long as there's not much happening, it's, it's not too much of a stress. It's just getting used to the routine of the things that we have to do every day. Um, so yeah, it's I, I would say about ninety percent of my job is editing, like video editing. Yeah. Um, and then we have some admin stuff that we do as well. Like we have to do the um, the call sheet for the next day. If you're on the late shift, that's the first thing you have to do. Mm -hmm. um, so all the presenters know when they've got to be in and who's in, and then we have to make the running orders, um, which is the most long-winded thing, but it has to be done obviously because producers need it in the gallery. Um, but yeah, so that's what you do as soon as you come in on the late shift and then you crack on with the editing that hasn't been done um, or hasn't been got to by the, uh, by the early assistant producer. So um, lots of stuff, lots of stuff to do. Are you enjoying it? I am enjoying it. Yeah, so obviously at uni I specialised in TV and I also have had a passion for horse racing so I knew that this sort of job was what I wanted to do. Um, I had my heart on being a presenter for a long time, and I think I've come to the conclusion that's probably not what I'm uh, destined to do. Um, but you never know down the line. But um, but yeah, to because this was the third time I'd applied for a job at Sky Sports Racing. First time I applied for a researcher role, which in hindsight is very difficult, and I think I'm, <laughs> it, I might. Have, I think I'm better suited to the job I'm doing now than, than mm -hmm. the one I applied for. 
uh, twice actually. Um, but yeah, no, to to finally get in. Um, so what was that three three years after leaving uni? I think so. It was more more of a relief than anything to actually make it because I think it's the sort of company where you know they're obviously more renowned and it's one of the biggest racing platforms. Um, so to be doing you know TV, which is essentially what I trained to do and what I really wanted mm-hmm. to do at uni, um, and to combine that with racing as well, it's really still quite surreal to be working in the racing environment day to day it's like it's, it's very strange that to think that this is my job um I guess sometimes it doesn't feel like a job mm-hmm. and when when we've got quite a lot on it does get quite hectic and you are reminded that you have a lot of things to do but just being in that environment where you're kind of watching or listening to the racing all day and you're working with people who you've seen on tv before and you know them well when it's like now you know, you're talking to them every day, you're around them every day. It's very weird, but yeah, it's, it's it is an amazing job, and I'm very lucky that you know I managed to secure it. Um, and fingers crossed, uh, as long as nothing goes wrong, I'll be able to stay there for for a long time. But um, yeah, I honestly can be happy with what I'm doing. So I know your love for racing kind of started from Frodon. Do you want to expand on that a little bit? So I know it was 2016 was when I really I kind of got into racing. Um, I remember he won. Um, the, I think it's the Caspian Caviar at Cheltenham in December 2016. Um, I think because the summer of 2016 when I started watching a bit more racing, I did a, a few bits here and there, um, and obviously I started watching ITV on a Saturday. Um, and yeah, I remember watching Frodo on, and I think it was something like he was the first four-year-old to win that race, either like ever or for a long time. Um, and I was just kind of in awe of the way he came up the hill, and I'd never really felt that way about a racehorse before. I just suddenly something like changed inside me. I actually appreciated like racehorses and, and what they're capable of doing, and that just happened to be Frodo on, and then. So Brian, he wasn't riding Frodo at that point. Um, but then by the time it got to my third year at uni, Brian had started riding Frodo. Um, and that's not necessarily because of that, but I decided to do my documentary on women racing. Um, and I think because I became so attached to that whole idea of, you know, why there's so few women in racing, not just jockeys, but across the whole sport, I think that made my love for Frodo even bigger because he had a Bryony link um, so it was you know amazing whenever they won a, well, whenever they won full stop but whenever they won a big race and, you know Bryony was um, I think she was the first uh, female jockey to win a great one hatch um, um, so things like that just became a bit more special when, when Frodo was running but um, yeah I guess I do owe a lot of my love for racing to, to him because he's the first horse that I really appreciated mm-hmm. and a lot of good has come from my love for racing so yeah he doesn't know it but he's um, <laughs> he's done done me a lot of favours here I don't think it's just you even though I think it's like their partnership became like so well known didn't it it was like Brian and Frodon were like the it pair of the time yeah yeah, yeah like it was Frodon was the people's horse I think for, for a couple of years um, after Brian Air, I think um, and then obviously the King George was unbelievable but yeah they yeah they, they were kind of the face of racing for a, for a while and you know there'll, there'll be another fairy tale story whether it's a female jockey or a particular horse like there always is but it was nice to have that for a, for a couple of years but they were right that you know they were everyone's favourite and whenever they raced everyone was cheering them on uh, and actually a bit more special to be honest but I, I've never I never like watched another horse and felt the way I do about Frodo like, I never get as excited about a particular horse yeah. so I can't anything kind of surpassing that um, p- particularly as it's kind of the first horse that I ever paid attention to so uh, that will always be, be special but, um, but yeah I think he'll always be the one everyone's got that one horse everyone that I speak yeah. to has got that one horse that 
yeah. started that, my love. I just hope I get to meet Frodo one day, maybe. Like, just go and see him. Just kind of pay my respects. So what's the best thing about your job? Ooh. I think more recently I've been um, doing a bit more of like longer edits so more features or promos rather than the standard day-to-day edits that we do just because I'm trying to push myself and do more you know difficult edits fast-paced edits um so what did I do so I did a a, a one a couple of weeks ago which was like a minute promo for the chest of bars because O'Brien had won it nine times and obviously won it ten times now um but it was like a, a I think it's about one minute 30 yeah, probably 30 and it was like four of his wins so like just clips from um in, between 2013 and his most recent one before this year um and it was just kind of like one after the other with some music underneath it some nice pretty shots the uh, high motion slow motion and stuff um but yeah that was that went out on air um i don't think it was necessarily meant to go out on air originally it was meant for like social channels so mm-hmm. twitter and facebook throughout the races or sky sports racing um and they decided that actually they, they played out on the, on the channel which was nice because obviously it meant i'd done an okay job with it yeah uh that was that was really nice um and we so every weekend we do uh, a feature called the weekly highs which is about a three minute promo or feature um obviously looking back at the, the biggest stories uh, or the biggest races of the week you don't want the, the 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 piece to be just race after race you need some nice yeah. colour shots in between and if there's a couple of funny moments from the studio we had those in as well just to break up the races and there were a couple of um, funny moments that um, had been clipped up so I put that together this week and we do that every week if you're on the late shift on the weekend uh, and I was so I think those sorts of because I've always really into my editing and like mm-hmm. creative, having control over something um, like from start to finish and, and seeing it turn out well and get plugged out on the channel. I think that's probably the most rewarding thing, definitely so far, um, to kind of know that they like the work and you know you can watch it on the TV and say I, I made that yeah. from start to finish. Um, yeah, that I think that's the definitely most re- rewarding thing um and yeah i'd say it's my favorite thing so far um 